I'm Gary Worthington and today I'm going to show you how to paint one of my best-selling spring break t-shirt designs. I've got my stencil right here. It's made out of 5 mil mylar and I'm going to spray it down with a little glue to stick it to the shirt, position it, and get ready to paint. The first color I'm going to use today is black. I'm using Wicked Colors from Createx. I can't say enough good about these colors. They are amazing. Um, I want to thank them and I also want to thank Airbrush Action for providing the opportunity to do these videos. It's a really good service for everybody and I think it'll help a lot of people. I'm just going to outline this design in the Wicked Black. You'll notice that these colors are just flowing amazing, amazing. My partner Eddie Davis and I have a t-shirt shop in Destin, Florida and we use these colors exclusively and we found them to be some of the best t-shirt colors ever available on the market. Wicked is also a multi-surface paint which makes painting on license plates and other oddball surface, surfaces that people bring into us that much easier. Baseball helmets, anything like that. Okay, again I'm just going around the edges with the black. That's going to give me a little bit of a buffer. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Wicked Thalo Green and I'm going to go around that edge. Just giving myself a little bit of a border. Inside the design here, I'm not going to go quite as heavy with that border. Now I'm going to pick up a cloud stencil, which also serves as a straight edge. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a water line in here with the straight edge. Lay that back down, come in, give myself some lines for water. And what I'm doing is I'm just running in a dagger stroke right across in a straight motion. You'll see that I'm using my whole body and that helps me get straighter lines. Now I'm going to do a couple of dagger stroke step clouds as we like to call them. Pick back up my cloud stencil and position it how I want it. And actually just kind of mist in around the top there. I don't want to go all the way down. I don't want to fill it in solid. I just want to indicate it a little bit. Then I'm going to switch over to wicked fluorescent green and give myself a little buffer there. Shade in from the top, shade in from the bottom, and then I'm going to do wicked fluorescent yellow. Blast that into the center. Really make that pop out. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my wicked black and I'm just going to do a little bit of seagrass over here. And these are just dagger strokes. Uh, at the airbrush getaway, this is a big part of the class that I teach, which is airbrush mastery. We show you how to master the dagger stroke, master control of the airbrush so that you can do exactly what I'm doing right here. Okay, now I'm going to peel off my stencil. And you'll notice how clean that looks, how nice that looks. That's why I'm using a stencil so that I can get that look. I have darker colors in the background and now I'm going to do lighter colors in the foreground, which means the first color I'm going to use is fluorescent raspberry. And what that does is gives me a nice popping border. Pink and green are a hot color combination. So I'm just going to go around this edge. Like that. Now, I'm going to start coming in here around the outside edge and doing the same thing. What I'm doing is giving myself a little border. This is a spring break design I've had up for about 10 years now. And I really like how it does for me. Um, it's a little bit off the beaten track as far as the lettering style goes, which gives people a little bit more of an option than your general block letter kind of style thing and uh, the girls really 
really respond to it. Okay, now that I have that in place, what I need to do is delineate these letters a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with that same wicked fluorescent magenta and just kind of outline these letters. You notice how I'm staying off the inside. I'm just off of the edge that we made before. And what we call this is an inner line. And I'm just going around and basically giving those letters some shape. These letters kind of have a graffiti look. I believe a version of this lettering style was featured in Airbrush Action many years ago. And a lot of people picked up on it. It's kind of become one of the staples of the t-shirt industry where I'm from. We also have freehand versions of this lettering style. Again, the reason that I use a stencil for this particular design is to keep the dark color in the background and the bright color in the front. If I were to mix pink and green freehand, it would look horrible. It doesn't work unless you do it a certain way. And by using a stencil, this makes it really easy for me and I can finish the design in a short amount of time and get my customers out the door. And it allows me to take in more business throughout the day. The faster you do something, the quicker you can move on to the next thing, the more, the more you can load yourself up. If I was doing everything freehand, I wouldn't be able to take in as much business as I do. Now I'm going to switch over to Wicked Fluorescent Pink, and I'm just going to pound that in. I want you to notice how much I saturate this. I just really bury that in. That's, that's another thing that we do in our shop. We really pound that color in. The way this Wicked flows really makes that easy. It just flows out of the gun, but what that does, it makes the shirt brighter, it makes the washability better, which these Wicked paints, the washability is amazing, and it really attracts the customer. They feel like they've got something. A lot of airbrushers are guilty of basically just kind of misting the shirt with paint, and it might look okay at first, but once it dries, or once you wash it one time, the color is almost gone and the people feel cheated and you're kind of turning a customer off of airbrush. What you want to do is you want to keep these customers coming back year after year. So a little bit of extra paint, a little bit of extra time can ensure that that happens. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to Wicked Violet. And... I'm basically going to go right back over that raspberry inner line that I made, okay? Because I want it to stand out even more. And you'll notice how fast I'm able to go around this, how well I'm keeping the line. That's all due to the fact that this paint is so well formulated that I can just keep moving. I don't have skips, I don't have clogging. The guys at Createx really have done their homework to make this that way. And, and be, be fun with this. Don't worry about the letter being perfect. Make it have a little character, a little bounce, almost a cartoony feel. The more fun this looks, the better it is. Airbrush is supposed to be fun. And when your customers are coming in, especially in a tourist area like mine. They're looking for that fun aspect. They're looking for the experience of it. And that's what you want to emphasize. Another thing I encourage you to do is treat your customers well. You know, talk to them. Make friends with them. Make them feel comfortable. The more human they feel like you are, the more you're going to get return business. If you're cold to them, 
and you just stick somebody out there to talk to them that doesn't really respond to them well, they're not going to come back. They're going to think it was a cold experience. Ask them how their trip is. Ask them where they're from. Those kind of things really make a big difference. Now we've got the meat of that design done. Essentially, it's out the door. Now, the other thing you could do is come down here, add a year. When you're doing spring break designs, it's always good to add the year. People want to know when they came. They want to have that memory. And you can also add a name. I'm going to add a name right across here. And a lot of times you want to sell this kind of design to a group. So if you have three girls, you want to come in. Put the freehand lettering up there. Little drop shadow. Don't get too fancy with this. You've spent enough time on this part of the design that you can make this simple. You want this to be re very readable. And what this is, say, is if a group comes in, they always will have a little nickname for themselves, the crew, the party crew, or anything like that. They'll tell you what they want, but if you put stuff like this on your wall, it gives them the idea to do that, and then you're selling more shirts. You're not just selling one shirt to Janet, you're selling a shirt to the whole crew. In my shop, this design sells for about $18 to $22, depending on how much work you put into it. But it's a hot seller, and it's a seasonal design, so make sure that you have something else you can put in that space when spring break is over. If you really want to pump up your airbrush skills, check out the many classes available at the Airbrush Getaways online at airbrushaction.com.